Hello and welcome to The New Normal with Steve Benequist. I'm New Normal and this is The Steve Benequist. Yes, welcome to The New Normal Lounge. And uh, you'll notice I paused and took a sip as though the title card might have popped up and the music started and all the production frills would be there. But this is a no frills edition of The New Normal with Steve Benequist because... Uh, absent from it is production, or most of it. Uh, I'm keeping it just me. I don't need the meddling hands of my executive producer, Lyle Gerber, today. Uh, if you saw last week's episode, you know that he pulled an April Fool's prank, which he thought was hilarious, which was to pot down my uh, volume so you couldn't hear me uh, while I was telling uh, a story so that he could promote Waba Grill. Ooh. But I didn't mean to say it, but I <laughs> stand true to my production uh, ban this episode. I'm not going to edit that out. But we don't have any sponsors on this show, despite uh, his insistence, despite his gambling debts, which that's the only reason I allowed him to do those spots. All we have is viewer support. If you want to make any contribution, which several, many have done, that's very nice. You can buy a t-shirt, you can send some money, do it, or don't, we're fine. There's a link below the video. Um... But he's been pushing this one, this thing, and he turned me down, just as I was telling an amazing story, if I do say so myself, about my whale-watching trip that I took about a week and a half ago now. And um, it was so moving. It was such a deep communion with nature. Uh, truly, the whale is the gentle giant of the sea. They're huge mammals that look like a fish. It was much better than that, let me tell you. Um... And Lyle blabbed all over it, talking about bowls of this and hand rub that and hand jerk this. And you've heard it all before. And then he lets me talk a little more. And then just as I'm about to read a letter, uh, I read viewer letters. This was from Pat in Flat Plains, Kansas, who's been writing to us since pretty much the beginning of the show. Uh, maybe even before. I don't know. I, uh, that would be amazing. And unlikely, but possible. I'll have my people check on it. Anyway, I felt that uh, Pat was due some attention. I wanted to share what he had to say. It was a deeply moving letter. And um, and much as my creative writing teacher in college would have said that I, regarding the whale story, told the shit out of it, um, this, Pat's letter was uh, uh, so beautiful on its own, it didn't need me to do anything of the sort. Um it moved me to tears, as you can see on camera, but uh, you don't hear what he said because <sighs> Lyle at that point was still talking about this place and had moved on to uh, uh, extol the virtues of the parking lot in the mini mall where this place is located and how many motorcycles it can accommodate. And <laughs> I guess it was a good prank, but fuck you, Lyle, you're, uh, you're off the show. All right, so, and uh, we've received letters asking, will I reread the letter from Pat? Will I retell the whale watch cruise story? The answer is no. The answer is no. And I'm afraid uh, that I don't want to punish you, my viewers. You're my uh, uh, loyal support. I need you. I love you. I gotta have you. I miss you, baby. But... Um, I don't know if you've ever seen Full Metal Jacket, an amazing war picture, uh, which features Vincent D'Onofrio going through training, basic training for, uh, to go off and fight in Vietnam. And he keeps screwing up. And instead of punishing him for it, the tough sergeant punishes everyone around him for it. And they grow to hate him, Lyle. So, um... I don't hope that it goes as far as it did in that movie where, spoiler alert, Vincent D'Onofrio puts a rifle in his mouth and uh, paints the walls of the bathroom with his brains. But, perhaps if anyone can find Lyle, they would reenact a scene where uh, D'Onofrio is lying in his bunk and hundreds of soldiers come by with towels with rolled up bars of ivory soap in them and bash him uh, with it causing bruises all over his body. But luckily for Lyle, no one knows where you are 
Or they could look in a certain restaurant at a certain intersection here in sunny L.A., California. All right, moving on. We are going to have a fun show, so there won't be any editing. There's no music. There's no none of that. No cool inset pictures. Sorry, that all takes the skills of Lyle Gerber. Uh, but we can live without that for today. We will talk about uh, the new normal COVID-wise. A little check-in on that. We're going to talk about tax season. That's coming up. Um, and we'll have another installment of What the Hell Did We Used to Call It? Coming right up. And um, in the meantime, you'll notice the wider framing of this. I'll embrace the Italian heritage side of my family and perhaps talk with my hands more. Or maybe I won't. Maybe I'm too Anglo for that. First up, the new normal. What is the new normal we're all going through right now? Um, I'd say I'm sure it's varied around. Uh, here in Southern California, um, I got my shot, you know, my first shot in early February, second shot in early March, and now I'm a month in the clear. But things hadn't changed around me much, so life didn't change that much. I'm a pretty careful guy anyway. I wear my mask. I don't really want to encourage other people not to wear their masks or discourage them from wearing their masks, however you want to phrase it. Um, plus, there's all those variants out there, so why not be a little careful? But now LA has come down from the purple tier, which was the worst, to the red tier, to, or it was the worst so far. Maybe there's a gangrenous black pus-filled tier that we never reached. But we're on the orange tier now, so even... You could go to a movie, technically, uh, which I would love to do. I have gone to a couple restaurants, but still eating outside. Um, yeah, I'd love to go to a movie. My, my favorite independent movie houses are not yet open again. And to be honest, I've gotten pretty used to my rather swank home movie setup. I got a pretty big screen TV, and at Christmas I updated the sound system with a sound bar with a subwoofer. And yes, because I judiciously, fastidiously researched the soundbar beforehand, it has an input for my turntable. So it's the modern and the old. I can listen to my records. When I watch the movies, I can pause it when I want. I can um, get up and go to the bathroom. I can eat any snack or drink that I want. I mean, my I don't have to drive and park it. I mean, I love movie theaters. I'm going to go to them. But... Um, but, you know, I'll wait for those indie places, I think. Or for the James Bond. I'll see that one. I want to see the the new black female, 007, and see Daniel Craig on his way out. Uh, are you listening, Hollywood? The answer to that question with Steve Benequist has never been clear. Um, so, but I know that it's getting worse in places that I would like to visit. My family lives in New England I uh, know, and New York. And those places are still increasing in cases, so that's not great. Um, so I don't know. I hope, but write in. Tell me how things are where you are. Um, I want to know. Moving on. Tax time is coming up. Um, uh, I think I may do them myself this year, my taxes. Um, I have a guy, and, uh, I frankly don't really know if he's good. I haven't done my taxes myself in a long time, but um, I think I have to get rid of him. And uh, I, I don't want eccentric personalities in a tax preparer. I want someone quite boring. I want someone who will make a light joke that I may or may not chuckle at. And uh, um, but this guy, I'm not gonna say his name, and I don't want him to lose business. He seems like a perfectly nice guy, but he has an obviously fake Jamaican accent. You have questions. And, uh, uh, for instance, how do I know he's not Jamaican? Uh, well, I did meet him briefly. I don't really remember how he spoke. I, I, the reason he's my guy is I met him right before tax time last year. And I had someone different. Uh, but they moved away. And uh, at a friend's party, but his name is Dave. He's an Asian last name. Uh, he's Asian American. He's from Nashville. I don't know how he could have a Jamaican accent. Uh, other questions you have. Uh, uh, why are you convinced that it's Jamaican? I'll play you a little clip. 
if I can, okay, that's the one level of production we can do. We'll just play it off of my phone here. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Let's hear this. I don't know if you could hear that well. Uh, let's, I'll play it one more time, put the mic right up to it. I don't know. I don't know. Other people are asking me, does he do a good job? You know, and uh, and I don't know. I don't know from taxes. I, he, he, he may, he seems to be looking for good deductions and stuff, but I don't know, honestly. It's an unfolding situation. Um, if you have thoughts, if you think that's not a good enough reason to get rid of him, um, tell me. If anyone knows the guy personally, maybe you can figure it out for me. It's weird. It's very weird. Um, all right, moving on. Finally, um, what the hell did we used to call it? Uh, this is the phrase that uh, is mysteriously overused to me lately is out of an abundance of caution. Out of an abundance of caution is something that I used to hear only in a friend's law office. I would hear that phrase and it felt it had the perfect lawyerly thing of like, it's got multi-syllable words, it uses far more words than it needs to, and it was always rubber stamp the same choice of words. And now, I understand, like we're living in a time where because of COVID, we speak of caution a lot, but um, it just sounds like stupid, mindless parrots that can't think, they don't even consider what the words are that they're saying. You hear, you know, uh, politicians say it, news reporters say it, uh, health officials, it's like, there are other ways to say it. And in this case, unlike last time, I can tell you what the hell we used to call it. Uh, you don't have to say out of an abundance of caution. Out of an abundance of caution. Okay, nine syllables. How about to be safe? That cuts it in a third. To be safe. There's nothing less accurate about it. There's nothing dumb sounding about it. You mean the exact same thing, and you save your breath, you stupid mindless parrots. You want to mix it up? Say just in case. Also three syllables. To be prudent. Prudent? Ooh, Latin origin word. Sound a little smarter. Four syllables. Sure, you can afford it. Uh, but come on. Stop using the same phrase. You are not Republican congressmen and Fox reporters uh, taking marching orders from someone. You're just talking about being careful. And I guess that's it. Um... For this episode of The New Normal with Steve Beniquist. Thank you for watching. Until next time, uh, hey, like and subscribe. Haven't said that in a while. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Uh, you won't even have to check. You'll get a little thing in your email box saying, hey, there's a new episode. Hey, check it out. It's free. Wouldn't that be nice? Leave some comments. Give me some feedback. We'll talk. Only Lyle won't. Uh, until next time, I'm Steve Beniquist reminding you that if it ain't new, it ain't normal.